Hi everybody, this is Anne. In this video, I challenge myself to design a pottery project suitable for every skill level, a project where there are no special tools required, and something that potters can personalize, give as gifts, and easily sell. I'm even going to throw in a bonus glaze review. The first project is the Bluebird Spoon Rest. I rolled a slab a quarter inch thick and ribbed it on both sides. I hand drew this template out of paper and cut it out. I placed the template over the slab and cut around it with an X-Acto knife. With a wet finger, I softened the sharp edges like this. First on the top side, and then I turned it over and softened the edges along the back side. I had a piece of foam that I reclaimed from an exercise mat that I'll use for shaping. I placed the cut slab on top of the foam. I created the template to be used in conjunction with this jar lid as it was the perfect size. It actually came off a jar of Metamucil that I had. <laughs> I positioned the lid so as to recreate the circle placement like on the template. Now using my fingers, I pushed the lid down into the foam so the clay would mold around it. I gently folded the head of the bird downward just a little. I then curled the tail down over my finger until it touched the foam. When I removed the lid, here's what I came up with. To dry it, I removed it from the mat. I want the circle part to dry flat, so I placed one of my bottles of glaze in the center to put a little weight down on that. When it was bone dry, I painted it with underglazes to continue that bluebird theme. I then bisque fired it to cone 04, glazed it, and fired it again to cone 6. Now who wouldn't like that as a gift? For the second project, I thought I'd add texture from this doily to the spoon rest. I drew this cute little chicken on a nest template and cut it out. I knew I would need to manipulate the center part of the clay with my fingers to mold it, so I decided to add texture just to the top edges and leave the bottom center part smooth. I placed the template down on the doily to see where the top edges would touch. I cut away the bottom part of the doily where I wanted the smooth part of the template to rest. I rolled the cut doily down onto the clay to transfer the texture. And that's perfect. Now I can position the template down so the texture is right where I want it. I cut that out with an X-Acto knife and remove the excess clay. That's so cool. As before, I wet my fingers and rounded the edges of the top side and the bottom side of the slab. I returned the piece of foam to my table and placed the slab down on it. Now I'll mold it. This time, I just wet my fingers and use them to push down and around on the center part of the clay. That causes the slab to curl up around my fingers. And here's the result. See how it has such a nice shape. To dry, so the center lays flat on the table, I had this little bottle. I added water to it for weight and set it down in the center. I used a celadon glaze on this one. I love how celadon breaks over the textures. Finally, I designed this owl spoon rest template in two pieces. I rolled out a quarter inch slab and cut out the body piece with an X-Acto knife. I removed the excess clay from around it. On another slab, I placed the head down onto it and with a needle tool, I gently traced over the lines of the interior of the face so it would leave indentation marks on the clay. I then cut out the head with an X-Acto and remove the excess clay. When I take the template off, you should be able to see those indentation marks of the eyes and etc. cetera. 
Again like the other projects, I used a wet finger to soften all the edges. For some extra texture, I used my stylus and created these marks like this. And don't forget to soften the edges around the body slab, too. Again, I brought back my thick foam piece and the Metamucil top. When it was positioned down onto the body slab, I pushed it down so the edges of the slab would curl around it. I curled the tail down over my fingers until it touched the foam. I then curled the top edge down a little bit, like this, to ready it for the next step. I thought I'd add some extra texture to the body. With my needle tool, I gently traced down the center of the circle all the way to the bottom of the tail. Next I found a spot about an inch over from the center line, and freehanded another line down to the center bottom point. I did the same thing along the other side to create a mirror image. With the back side of my needle tool, I pressed it down along the edge of the curved lines to create circle imprints. Using the flat side of one of my short carving tools, I created these lines to create a little herringbone pattern to the body. Next, I positioned the head to the back side and slipped and scored it into place. I turned it over and worked the seam with my paintbrush. I laid it back down on my work surface and placed another glaze bottle down along the center so it would dry flat. When I was trying to figure out what glaze to use on the owl, Jim and I had to make a trip to Orlando to Florida clay art to pick up a new load of clay. I thought we would pick out a new glaze to experiment with. We saw this opulent 604 calico glaze and thought we'd give it a try. The glazes always look so nice on the sample tiles, but would it work on my porcelain? Hmm. After shaking and stirring thoroughly, the glaze did appear a bit on the runny side. I brushed four coats of the surface per the instructions and made sure to work it really well into the texture. The glaze dried really fast upon application. I fired it to cone 6, and here's how it came out. Where the glaze was thinner on the highlighted areas, it was a brownish color. And where the glaze was thicker, it was purple and blue. It compared really well with the sample tile. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. I love how these turned out. And again, as everyone uses them in their kitchens, they make perfect gifts or fast-selling items to add to your pottery booth. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And I'd like to thank the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. See you next time in the studio.